हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स सो व्हाट यू विल गेट इन दिस वीडियो दैट व्हाट आर ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स हाउ यू कैन डेवलप ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स देयर एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस एप्लीकेशंस एंड फाइनली द एग्जांपल ऑफ ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स विल बी डिस्कस इन दिस लेक्चर सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट आर ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स सो ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स आर दोज प्लांट्स in which we have just inserted one or more foreign genes means their genome they contain one or more foreign genes from other organism so that plants are known as transgenic plants means they contain the foreign gene in their genome and the process by which these transgenic plants are developed so that process is known as the trans genesis and that gene the gene which you are transferring to the plant so that gene is known as trans gene but keep in mind the gene which we are transferring to the plant it should create a stable and heritable character then only we can develop the transgenic plants now how we can develop the transgenic plant so for development of transgenic plant there are few steps like first is identification and the isolation of gene of interest here gene of interest means that gene which we want to transfer to the plants second step is designing the gene for insertion because we are inserting gene to the plant so first of all we have to design a proper gene construct for the ins insertion and that include that we add certain dna segment to enhance the gene expression and we also add some selectable marker why we are adding dna segment because just to increase the gene expression because we want to express our gene so for that we have to add certain dna elements which just enable the expression of our gene and we also add the selectable marker genes because we want to select whether the plant has received our gene or not the third step is the introduction of this gene construct or the transfer of this gene construct to the plant cell and this step is known as transformation next step is the selection of transformed cells means we have to select whether the gene has been successfully transferred to the cells or not so we just select out the cells which contain the foreign gene so that is the selection of transformed cells and finally we regenerate the complete plant from these transformed cells so by following these five steps we can develop the transgenic plant now in the further slide i will discuss these steps in detail so first step identification and isolation of genes so first of all you have to identify the gene of interest so you can find that where you can get your gene you may get your gene in some microorganism some other plants or animal species so the first step very first step is just to identify the gene of interest that where you can get that particular gene after that once you identify your gene then you will isolate your gene of interest so you have to follow some procedure for the isolation of gene of interest like just you isolate the dna means gene of interest means you are simply you are just isolating the your dna that contain the gene of interest and generally we can use by using you can say we make the use of restriction enzymes and by gel electrophoresis so by using these technique we can isolate our gene of interest now the next step after the isolation of gene now we have our gene then the next step designing the gene for insertion so here we are making our gene capable to express in the plant cell so that's why we have to make our gene such that it can express itself inside the transgenic plant so for that we use a special vector that is known as expression vector so we add certain elements in a vector or you can say in the expression vector and these elements so these dna segments are like first promoter because we know the transcription starts from promoter so our gene of interest definitely needs the promoter to transcribe so for that we use some strong promoter like for example 35s 
कोली फ्लावर मोजाइक वायरस प्रोमोटर सिक्वेंस दे कैन बी यूज एज अ प्रोमोटर दैट विल ट्रांसक्राइब द जीन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट दैट शुड बी ट्रांसक्रिप्शन टर्मिनेटर सिक्वेंसिस बिकॉज एज द ट्रांसक्रिप्शन स्टार्ट सो इट शुड डेफिनेटली एंड एट अ प्रिसाइज और यू कैन से डेफिनेट पोजिशन सो जस्ट टू एंड द ट्रांसक्रिप्शन वी नीड ट्रांसक्रिप्शन टर्मिनेटर सिक्वेंसिस सो दीज सिक्वेंसिस शुड ऑल्सो बी देयर इन द एक्सप्रेशन वैक्टर नेक्स्ट राइबोजो माइंडिंग साइड सिक्वेंस एज वी नो द आफ्टर ट्रांसक्रिप्शन ऑफ जीन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज द ट्रांसलेशन फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ प्रोटीन एंड ट्रांसलेशन स्टार्ट एज द मैसेजर आर ने बाइंड टू द राइबोजोम थ्रो सम साइड सो दीज साइड्स आर द राइबोजो बाइंडिंग साइड सिक्वेंसिस सो इन आवर जीन कंस्ट्रक्ट द आर बी एस दैट इज राइबोजोम बाइंडिंग साइड सिक्वेंसिस शुड ऑल्सो बी देयर द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट इज ट्रांसलेशन इनिशियशन कोडोन बिकॉज एज यू नो ट्रांसलेशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम अ स्पेसिफिक कोडोन दैट इज ए यू जी और समटाइम जी यू जी सो वी हैव टू insert this translational initiation codon sequence in our gene of interest or you can say in the expression vector next element is the translation termination codon so as the translation starts it should stop at some definite position after the production of protein so for that just to stop the translation we have to add the translation termination codon sequences there and finally the gene construct or this expression vector should have multiple cloning Sites so that we can insert the gene of uh, interest in these cloning sites. So this is the first you can say first step of the designing of gene for the insertion. Then second we have to add the selectable marker. Why we are adding the selectable marker? Because as we introduce our gene into the cells, then we have to select out the whether the cells they have got our gene of interest or not. so just to identify the cells which have our gene of interest so we use certain selectable marker genes these genes these are you can say these are introduced into vector along with the gene of interest so when the cells receive our gene of interest they also receive these selectable marker genes which ultimately gives us a way to select out the you can say the transformed cells generally we use certain genes which provide resistance against some chemical so by using that particular chemical we can identify whether our transformed cells are resistant to that chemical or not so the transformed cell they should be capable of growing under that particular chemical so we are using this selectable marker genes now next step that is transfer of this gene construct into the plant so now we have our gene construct which have the gene of interest the element which we we just discussed about the expression vector and the marker genes now this gene construct we have to transfer this gene construct into the plant cell and this step is known as transformation so this transformation can be done by three methods like first chemical method when we make the use of chemicals to transfer our gene to plant cells so that methods are comes under the category of chemical method like for example we can use the chemical calcium phosphate precipitation deae dextrin precipitation and many others second when we make the use of some physical means for transferring our gene of interest to the plant cell so that methods comes under the physical category like for example dna micro injection in which we directly inject our gene construct into the plant cell similarly electroporation where we make the use of electric current to create the pores inside the membrane of plant cells and from these pores our gene of interest or you can say gene construct migrate inside the plant cells and we can also make use of certain bacteria or viruses in that case we say it viral or biological method of gene transfer like in case of biological method in the plant we basically used agrobacterium mediated transformation so how agrobacterium is used for the transfer of this gene so i have a separate video on that the link will be in the description so you can see that video to get the knowledge that how we can use biological method that is agrobacterium mediated transformation so now at this point 
these three methods like chemical physical or biological method either one of them can be used for the transfer of this gene construct to the plant cells now once the gene of interest has been transferred to the plant cells now the next step is just to select out the cells that contain our gene of interest means the selection of transformed cells so as we used selectable marker genes during the gene construct so now these genes will help us to select out the transformed cell because these genes they give some specific trait or some specific property to the transformed cell which we can detect like these marker genes are generally categorized into two types selectable marker genes and second reporter or scoreable or the screenable marker genes selectable marker genes are those genes which give a specific property to transformed cell like they may give resistance against some chemical while reporter genes these are those genes which give some phenotypic change or morphological change to the transformed cell like they may give some specific kind of color to the transformed cell so that we can uh, easily identify the transformed cell like for example in reporter gene we can use gfp gene green fluorescence protein gene which gives green color to the transformed cell so by making use of these selectable or reporter genes we can select out the transformed cells now the next step is regeneration of transformed cell so once we get the transformed cell after the selection then we will use these transformed cells for the regeneration of complete plant for this what we do we just transfer these cells into the media that contain the all of the nutrients which are required by these uh, transformed cells to regenerate into the plantlet so we just allow them to regenerate into plantlet in, under laboratory conditions and we generally wash you can say we generally wash these plantlets to remove the agar and then put them in the low mineral salt solution for 24 to 48 hours after that we transfer these small plantlets to the pots the pot that contain the autoclave sterilized mixture of clay sands and leaves in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 and these pots they are covered with transparent polythene to maintain the humidity and they are kept undisturbed for 15 to 13 days so at this stage the plant become fully acclimatized and finally these fully acclimatized plants they are transferred to the field and in the field they will grow as normal plants so by this process by following these five steps we can develop the transgenic plants now what are the advantages of transgenic plants so advantages include like first improvement in the nutritional value of food yeah definitely by inserting the genes for high quality nutrients you can increase the or you can improve the nutritional value of the food produced by these transgenic plants second we can also increase the farmers income definitely if the you can say quality of food will be increase or the quality of crop will be increase so income of the farmer will definitely increases the next increase in food supply because now we can make more fruit from a single transgenic plant by inserting such kind of genes so that the food or the fruit production increase so by this we can also increase the food supply next advantage that these are very convenient and flexible to use and they are also safer for the environment because here we are decreasing the use of pesticides and finally the improved quality of ground and the surface water with less pesticide residue because if we are using very less pesticide so definitely we are improving the ground water because less pesticide is used so the less pesticide is leaked down to the ground water so we are just improving the quality of ground and the surface water and the seventh advantage it include that they are safe to non target organisms and also to human being means they are safer so these are some advantages of transgenic plant next are disadvantages so these transgenic plant have some disadvantages also like first disruption of pollination so it may be you can say 
it may be you think that they may disrupt the pollinator and the plant communities if the toxin means if the gene for certain toxin we are using in the transgenic plant if that toxin is expressed in the plant nectar or in the pollen so they may disrupt the pollinator because they will feed on that nectar and the toxin will definitely kill that pollinator but this is only the case if that toxin is expressed in the plant nectar and pollens next disadvantage that they could raise the allergy means definitely there may be chances that the food developed by this transgenic plant may have allergy to some humans like for example the genetically modified soya bean that contain brazilian protein was allergic to human and was withdrawn from the market so there are the you can say risk of allergy related to the food from these genetically modified or the transgenic plants so these are the disadvantage major disadvantages of these transgenic plants now the applications of transgenic plants so applications of transgenic plants include first resistance to biotic stress so what is this biotic stress biotic stress is the stress burden on the plant which is due to living beings like viruses bacteria pest pathogens so these pathogens they create a biotic stress to the plant but by using the transgenic plants we can develop disease resistance plant by transferring the some genes which provide resistance to these plants against some specific pathogens so we can also make the insect resistance plant or virus resistance plant or you can say the bacterial resistance plant by just transferring the specific resistant genes to the plant so by using transgenic plant we can make the biotic stress resistance plant second application include the resistance to abiotic stress means we can also develop the plants that are resistance to abiotic stress so here again abiotic stress is that stress which is due to non living factor that may be due to environmental factors so like uh, for example as a change in environment or you can say if the water content is increased or decreased if the temperature is increased or decreased so due to all these environmental changes there is a stress developed in the plant that stress is known as abiotic stress because these are non living factor but with the transgenic plant we can also develop the these abiotic stress resistance plants what we can do we can simply transfer the genes that are the stress tolerant genes to the plant so these genes they definitely help the plant to grow under the abiotic stress conditions now next application include the increase nutritional value so as you can see we can transfer any gene to the plant so we can also transfer the genes that will increase the nutrient composition of the plant fruit so definitely we can also increase the nutritional value of that particular plant or crop and next application it include that we can use this transgenic plant as the factory for the production of recombinant protein because ultimately what we are doing we are just making the recombinant protein of our genes so we can use this transgenic plant for the production of recombinant proteins for the production of vaccines or antibiotic mean in future we can definitely go for the production of vaccines by this transgenic plants or antibiotic transgenics by these antibiotic in these transgenic plants so that was the some applications of transgenic plants now the examples of transgenic plants or you can say the history of transgenic plants or history of genetically modified crops so first in 1982 the first transgenic plant was produced which was an antibiotic resistance tobacco plant then in 1994 the first genetically modified crop was approved in us that was flavor saver tomato this flavor saver tomatoes have increased shelf life because we have just transferred some genes that increase the shelf life of the tomato so the name given to that tomato was the flavor saver tomato in 1994 again 
द यूरोपियन यूनियन अप्रूव्ड वन मोर जेनेटिकली इंजीनियर्ड टोबैको दैट वॉज रजिस्टेंस टू अ हर्बी साइड दैट इज ब्रोमोजाइनिल एंड इट वॉज द फर्स्ट कमर्शियली इंजीनियर्ड क्रॉप दैट वॉज मार्केटेड इन द यूरोप नाउ नेक्स्ट इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी फाइव बी टी पोटैटो बी टी स्टैंड फॉर बेसलेस थ्रोजेनेसिस सो बी टी पोटैटो वॉज ऑल्सो अप्रूवड बाय द यू एस ई पी ए दैट इज यू एस एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एजेंसी दैट मेक्स इज फर्स्ट पैसेज आर प्रोड्यूसिंग क्रोप एंड वट दे डिड दे जस्ट मॉडिफाइड द पोटैटोज बाय ट्रांसफरिंग द क्राई थ्री ए जीन्स दैट ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द बैक्टीरिया बेसलेस थ्रोजेनेसिस एंड नाउ दिस पोटैटो बिकम रजिस्टेंस टू द पेस्ट दैट इज कोलेड्र पोटैटो बीटल सिमिलरली नाइनटीन नाइनटी फाइव वन मोर क्रोप दैट इज बी टी कॉटन इन विच द क्राई जीन्स आर ट्रांसफर टू द कॉटन प्लांट एंड नाउ द कॉटन प्लांट बिकम रजिस्टेंस टू द इंसेक्ट यू कैन से रजिस्टेंस टू द इंसेक्ट दैट इज बोलो वोर्म सो वी जस्ट डेवलप द इंसेक्ट रजिस्टेंस बी टी कॉटन प्लांट एंड इन टू थाउजेंड one more example here that is golden rice in which we just transferred the genes for making the vitamin a so golden rice they have the high content of vitamin a for this we just transferred the genes that is beta carotene genes for making the vitamin a inside the rice so as we eat this rice so definitely we can you can say fulfill the vitamin a vitamin we can fulfill the vitamin a demand of our body so these are the some examples or you can say the historical events in the transgenic production so guys this was all about the transgenic plants their production step advantages applications and as well as the example so this is all for the today guys see you in the next video thank you very much